Up, let me play for you what Tom Coburn said just this morning. Personally, I know we have to raise revenue. Uh, I don't really care which way we do it. Uh, actually, I would rather see the rates go up than do it the other way because it gives us greater chance to reform the tax code and broaden the base in the future. Let me bring in Congressman James Langford. He has been elected uh, the House Policy Committee Chairman for the 113th Congress. That is the fifth ranking Republican in the House. Congratulations, Congressman. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me ask you about the possibility of some sort of two-step solution. And do you think if you wait and you have the debt ceiling that it would give Republicans Republicans more leverage. Uh, I don't know if it's a matter of leverage. The two-step solution is going to be where we're headed uh, because you can't deal major tax reform during this time and you don't want to do major tax reform behind closed doors. That needs to be an open process where a lot of people are engaged because this will be a difficult issue. The same thing with entitlement reform. Uh, this is a product though, of what our negotiations were last year from the debt ceiling. Everyone looks and say, how did we get to this fiscal cliff? It's not only the tax increase from the Affordable Care Act that all start January the 1st, but it's also a product of what happened in the last lame duck punted into this one and from last summer in the budget negotiation put into this one. We have to get real cuts equal to what we're doing in debt ceiling increase, and if we want to resolve that, it, the best time to resolve that is right now because we have another debt ceiling increase coming. But you've told the New York Times you think your party is boxed in, and I want to read for you something from this morning's Washington Times. Quote, Republican leaders struggled Tuesday to contain the backlash from conservatives over the GOP's offer of $800 billion in tax increases to head off the fiscal cliff, a move that didn't impress the White House, even as it spawned a rebellion on the right. So are Republicans going to have to give on raising rates? No, we're not, because what the president's focused in on is two things. We have the Affordable Care Act taxes, those increased January the 1st on people making $200,000 or more. The president wants a rate increase coming in January, another one on people making $200,000 or more, and then he wants to go into next year's negotiations on reforming the tax code, pull out deductions on people making $200,000 or more. He's looking in a single year time period to have three tax increases on the same group of folks. We're saying that's dramatic on the economy, that will slow, slow down development of our economy. In a time we're looking to incre increase more jobs, why would we do this? Now, how does this stimulate the economy, and how does it actually solve the debt? Again, the President's proposal is $160 billion of new tax a year on a $1 trillion problem. Now, we've got to get to the spending side. Let me play for you what the president said about this. Okay. Unfortunately, the speaker's proposal right now is still out of balance. Uh, you know, he talks, for example, about $800 billion worth of revenues, but he says he's going to do that by lowering rates. And when you look at the math, uh, it doesn't work. He says, Congressman, the math doesn't add up. Well, I'd like to be able to see how he's doing his math as well on his spending cuts. So far, his spending cut proposals are, we'll take the spending cuts from last year and count them again for this year. We also are going to end the war in 2014, so we'll have savings, meaning we won't borrow as much, and we'll take that as $2 trillion in savings. Neither of those are real savings. Neither of those are real cuts. Just the statement, we won't borrow as much because we're ending the war, and we're going to double count last year's cut in saying we never did a tax increase based on that, so let's count it again, well, is well, but absurd. Let me, let's look at that $800 billion proposal, because yeah. in Independent experts have looked at this, and they say, while well, technically you can get $800 billion in revenue, you'd have to get rid of hugely popular deductions for the rich, including mortgage deductions or the charitable deduction. If you get rid of the charitable deductions, in the president's words, you put every hospital and university and not-for-profit on the verge of collapse. Is that something you're willing to do rather than raising rates? No. What, what you're talking about is not the only alternative. And I know some economists say that. There are also economists that say the different direction on this. What's trying to be negotiated right now is behind closed doors to say, okay, let's get the specifics on this because the public battle on this is not working. And I wish the president would come to the table and say, let's actually negotiate and get this thing done. Uh, we are very, very willing to be able to sit down and say, let's try to negotiate a final resolution to this. At this point, as earlier was stated, there's no resolution on this. There's no even work behind the scenes in the staff level. Level. We want to see this get resolved. Congressman James Langford, thank you very much. And let's talk a little bit more about negotiations. I want to play something Congressman Tom Cole said this morning on Morning Joe. Well, let's not overread the president's mandate. The president got reelected with a lower percentage and fewer votes than he won with. And in a weaker political position, we've got the House, the Senate's divided, and the president is not stronger than he was. He's actually weaker.